How we doing guys and welcome to the combined 11 Manchester City against Arsenal. Oh mate, it's so good that the Premier League is back after that absolute dire international break. But oh mate, what a game to come back to. <laughs> oh, I'm not trying to dismiss Liverpool here, but this one could well be a title decider. This is huge. Um, and listen, it's only right that we do a combined 11. I think that you only have to look at combined 11s now and see how close it is between players in positions um, to see how far Arsenal really have come. And, you know, a few years ago, if you'd done a combined 11, it would be very easy because it would be all Man City. But now there's some debates and, yeah, there will be some favouritism. There will be some... Uh, controversy, there will be some question marks and whatnot, but listen, it's football, this is what happens. Now, I'm going to lay a rule down very clearly from the start. I'm not going to include players that I feel are injured. Um, there's some where there are question marks over, so it's kind of difficult in one respect because you look at some of the Arsenal and Man City players and you think, okay, He's had a bit of a knock, but I know he's going to play and I'm not sure about this one, etc, etc. Um, you know, players like, um, uh, let me think, uh, Kevin De Bruyne or Bakayo Saka that have had kind of knocks and missed international. These players are going to play in this game. It's very simple. They're going to play. Um, same with the likes of Gabriel and whatnot. They're going to play. Um, so... Let's get that one out straight away. Um, obviously, if, uh, you know, a player ends up playing that, I think they might not. It's what it is, isn't it? But, um, yeah, listen, let's go straight into this lineup. And um, starting off in goal now, I don't feel Edison is going to be available for this game. He is one of these players that is injured. Picked it up against Liverpool. I don't think he's going to be back for this game. Um, and speaking to a few Manchester City uh, fans and whatnot, um, yes, there are some out there. Uh, they don't believe he'll be back either. Um, so David Rea is going in goal and it's that simple. Um, it'll be a very close one because I think David Rea has had an exceptional season. Most clean sheets, best defensive record. Um, and he's really starting to come into his own at Arsenal now. And um, I would have probably picked Edison based on the fact that he's consistently done it over a number of years. I feel that, you know, with um, our situation, he needs to be there for a bit longer, Rhea. You know, if he does this over the next three, four years and wins some Premier League titles along the way, then, yeah, it's going to be no debate. But um, because, obviously, Edison is injured, in my opinion, um, David Rhea is going to start in goal. Uh, right back position, and I feel that this one would have been a very close one, but I actually feel that Kyle Walker is going to miss this game. He is one of those where it looked like a muscular injury. Um, those kind of injuries are not ones that you just run off, that you can just, you know, play through the pain, take a painkilling injection and whatnot. It's not, you know, a knock. It's a muscle injury, and it looks like a hamstring you don't just repair those. They don't just miraculously recover in the space of a couple of days. Um, and Kyle Walker's game, because of his pace and the energy and everything, it'd be really difficult for him. Um, so I feel he will miss this game, which means Ben White starts. Um, but I think he's close. I think Ben White is exceptional at right back. He's had an exceptional, um, you know, turn of year since, you know, the, the new year and whatnot, in particular, and last season and... He is so good. Um, but Ben White, he goes in at right back. Um, now, the centre-back positions. Um, again, this is going to be some question marks. Would you include um, John Stones in that centre-back category? Because he's played a little bit more further forward, etc. I feel that John Stones is not going to be available. I feel that that injury um, could be more serious than you think. Um 
Ruben Diaz, I rate him so much. I really, really like this guy. Um, but last time out against Liverpool, Pep Guardiola actually dropped him. Um, and he actually went with somebody with a bit more pace um, because he felt that Liverpool were going to cause problems with the likes of Diaz and whatnot. Um, so it's an interesting one. But I'll be honest with you. How can you break up the best defensive partnership in the Premier League? I honestly don't know how you can. Most clean sheets, best defence. I don't know how you can break up Saliba and Gabriel. If it was the other way round, let's think about this now. If it was the other way round and Man City had the best defence in the league, most clean sheets, and it was Diaz and Stones, for example, everyone would sit there and say, well, you're not going to separate those two. They've got the best defence. They've got the most clean sheets. You keep that unit together, regardless. So, for me, Saliba, definitely, all day long. Gabriel alongside him. And that's what I'm going to go with. Um, on the left-hand side, um, I feel that this is an area that we have struggled with and we have a problem and everything else. So, we'll make it very simple. Nathan Ake, for me, will go on that left-hand side. Um... Not Sinchenko and Kirior, despite his recent performances, he needs to be doing it a lot longer. Um, and Nathan Ake, I like him as a player and he will go on that left-hand side. Um, in the midfield, first of all, the first man there will be Rodri. Um, there will always be the debate. Uh, Rodri, Rice and everything else. I feel that those two are the best in the Premier League. Um, they're exceptional. Rodri is so good. Um, and he goes in there. It's not even a debate. It's very, very simple for me. Um, on the uh, right-hand side, um, it's Bakayo Saka. And um, there's not a debate in this for me. Um, Phil Foden wouldn't go on that right-hand side. I'll explain in a moment. Um, but Absolutely not. Um, yeah, Bakaro Saka, it's very, very simple. And I don't see how anyone could disagree with it. Um, in the middle, the two midfielders and the system and the formation, I'm doing a similar kind of what Arsenal do and whatnot. Um, this one will be between De Bruyne and Martin Odegaard. And it will have to be Kevin De Bruyne um, because he's just continually done it. Martin Odegaard is very, very close. I love this guy. He is exceptional. For me to even leave him out, it hurts. But you have to, you know, be honest about it. And, you know, Kevin De Bruyne, I feel that Odegaard's going to take over that mantle in the next couple of years. Um, but, yeah, for this one, Kevin De Bruyne does that all day long. Uh, next to him, um, Declan Rice, um, very, very straightforward one for me. Um, he gets in there all day long. Are we going to debate it? Is there even a debate? No, there isn't, to be quite honest with you. So that's very simple. Um, on the left-hand side, we go with Phil Foden. Um, and like I said, I know that he likes to normally play out on that right-hand side, but Bakayo Saka, he stays on that right-hand side. Phil Foden goes on that left-hand side. I think he's had a great season with Man City. Um, like him as a player. Um, didn't like his performance, you know, on Tuesday night for England. I thought it was quite poor for his standards. But, yeah, um, he goes into this one. Uh, up front as the main striker. Well, it can only be one person, really, and that's Erling Haaland. Um, apart from of late... Um, Kai Havertz, um, yeah, kind of playing in that false nine and whatnot. There isn't a debate. He's the best goal scorer in the Premier League. Um, missed quite a few chances this season. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he's been as clinical as last season. But he's um, he's so good. So, so good. Um, so, yeah, he goes into the side. Um, so, listen, when you look at that, um, and you look at the Man City players in there. Um, we've got Ake, uh, we've got Rodri, uh, we've got De Bruyne, Foden and Haaland. So it's five Man City players, six Arsenal players. Now, 
Again, what did I say at the very beginning? If I feel that a player is going to be injured for this game, I'm not going to include him. Um, if Kyle Walker was fit, then I'd probably start him over Ben White at right back. And then Edison, um, you know, in the goalkeeping situation. And then, yeah, it's kind of... Listen, there's not a lot between the sides right now. And that shows how far Arsenal have grown as a team. Um, and listen, that's my opinion on it. I think it's very fair. I think it's very, you know... Listen, when you've got to leave players like Martin Odegaard out, it just shows how tough it actually is. Um, simple as that, really. I ain't got much more to say on it. So, listen... Let me know in the comment section what you think um, about the combined 11. There's going to be disagreements. There's going to be people that don't actually listen to what I say at the beginning and go, oh, why is Carl Walker and Edison not in there and that? Because I've said they're injured. So I'm not including injured players and I don't think they are. And I'm not splitting up the centre-backs because at the end of the day, they're the best defensive you know, team in the, in the Premier League. Why am I going to split them up? Come on, man. Be quiet. Um, so yeah, look, listen, that is it for the combined 11. Uh, watch out for the preview before Sunday. Um, and like I said, let me know in the comment section what you think. Um, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.